let's start with your name. Bernice. B-E-R-N-I-C-E. And your last name? And Marfus. M-A-R-F-I-C-E. So they used to call me Bernice Marfice. You know. <laughs> and your last name now? And my last name now is Kopetsky. K-O-P-E-T-Z-K-Y. When were you born? Born 1931 in the hospital of Pawnee City. Your parents lived where? My parents lived just out of Table Rock, about three miles in the country. And Pawnee City was the closest hospital. And uh, that's, that's where I arrived. When you started to school, where did you go to school? Well, I started to school, and here's this priceless picture that I've got. In 1931, I started to school, and this is the amazing thing. This, this picture was taken by a traveling photographer and hoping to make some money, and of course everybody was too poor to buy the pictures after, after he made them, but I acquired this picture. Um, in fact, my brother got it from somebody else, and this was at the school this, I'm in the first grade in this picture. There are 30 children in, the, in, this, in this, and they were there. I started out uh, with seven first graders, six eighth graders, and then all the other grades in between. 30 children in one school. And the teacher was Marcella Wheeler. Her maiden name was Klein. And um, you can see there, just by the maturity of these people, these boys are just regular age. They're, I mean, which would be, you know, to be in eighth grade. But look at these, look at these little first graders. Now, do you want to pick the first grader out of that front row? <laughs> I. Is that you? No, this oh, one right here. Almost. <laughs> almost the littlest one back in first grade. And I don't know what time of year that was. We were all wearing shoes. I think some of the kids came to school barefoot the first at the first of the school year. But I think we my family wore shoes. Was um Miss Wheeler Mrs. Wheeler? No, she, she was... Miss Klein, then? Yeah, she was Miss Klein. Was she your teacher in kindergarten as well? Well, you oh, nobody had kindergarten. Oh, okay. So you started in first grade. First grade. I got it. Okay. But when I started in first grade, this is what they did. The big thing was for your eighth graders to pass the state exam. And you had to go into Pawnee City to take it, so it wasn't, you know, it was really... Um, if you didn't pass the exam, you had to stay in school until you were 16. But, um, and a lot of them quit at the end of the eighth grade after, if they had passed that. But there, it, it was hard. It was hard. They had to know a lot of things. And so, so in between, in that little ante room off of the school, the sixth graders would take the first graders and teach them in that little hall there. Or the you know the water bucket is there and there's you know just and that they were our teachers, but none of them of course were trained to be teachers. Did sixth graders taught you when you weren't the, learning? No, eighth graders. The eighth graders. Yeah, and they would of course you couldn't all be out there at once because but maybe and I don't remember that but but we would. I would read to them from the book, but I wasn't reading words. I just knew by the pictures what they said. What they were going to so, what did your did your parents do anything? Say anything? Well, no. Well, no. When they realized I really wasn't reading, but with a family as big as ours, uh, you know, they're not much one-on-one -on -one time with the parents. You know how that goes. So I would. I figured when I couldn't read it, am I supposed to know those words? And, and so I, then I just realized, I, I, I guess I better learn the words. And of course, I, get a, I got a very good education because the country school, I loved, if I got my work done, the teacher didn't care if I just sat there and listened to the others. 
So I could hardly wait till I was in the fifth grade and could do fractions because I knew how to do them already. Because I, I had watched them for, watched the teacher putting them on the chalkboard and uh, and as soon as I knew how to add and subtract and 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 do reducing fractions, adding fractions, oh, a guy could just hardly wait. And this, and this, then uh, I'll be, but maybe I'll be about in the third or fourth grade when they were um, uh, diagramming sentences, and we some of our teachers still teach that because. Uh, that's you have to know the structure of a mm -hmm. sentence before you can diagram it. Are you if you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yep. And uh, now you know. Even now, I see in in the newspapers. Oh, you obviously, the, the object of the preposition is you know in the wrong case. And the other, I don't I don't know what they where they get their education because there's lots of mistakes. So it wasn't in a country school. <laughs> it wasn't in a country school. But then, then I spent all, um, all of my, uh, let's see, there were four, four siblings in school at the same time. This, this was my sister Louise. She was um, the eight years older than me. My oldest sister started high school the year that I was in first grade. She was 10 years older. And uh, uh, then Bill is on here someplace here. And, and oh, wait, Paul. which is Bill? Let me get closer. Bill is that one. Okay. And this is Paul. And then, of course, there I am. And then afterwards, I had these three brothers. <laughs> you grew up to be a teacher. Then, well, I had the best teacher that, uh, after going through teacher's college and, and teaching, that I think I was so fortunate because I had, uh, she was the daughter of our local dentist at the time. And she was very, she was right out of high school because that's the way you could teach right out of high school if you took that class, the normal training class. And she was before her time because she did things that after I was trained to be a teacher, after I went to college, after I got on my degree, and teaching, and I would still go back to thinking, well, now what she did, some of the things that she did in that little country school. You're talking about Dorothy Playhall? I'm talking about Dorothy Playhall, cubic. And uh, she only taught, let's see what it was, maybe it was two years in the school, and then got married, and never taught again, except for her own children. But she was a fantastic person. And, and just a role model for, for the older kids. She could knock the softball clear out of the, out of the field, you know, so. And she had, uh, when, a, when some new students would come in the middle of the year, especially in March when they used to come in, and come, you, you never know what kind of school they came from or how the, what the discipline was like. <clears throat> but anyway, the first day they came in and they threw their waste paper on the floor beside their desk and she hit the roof. <laughs> but she didn't have to do, she, you know, she said, this is not, this is a school, this is not a pig pen, and uh, pick up that paper and don't ever do that again. And they never dropped a piece of paper on the floor again. But then I went to Table Rock and, and to school, and I was from the country, you know, and all these stories about country kids you know, being so dumb, the kids from the country. Well, half of our class was from the country, and we took Table Rock school by storm because we had, Anyway, I was, and so I was a school vector, valedictorian, and then I graduated from Proust College. So my background at Table Rock was very good. I had some really good teachers, and some of the things, then I went on to do my, uh, after got my degree, 
when I went back to Lincoln and to Omaha University, Omaha University, to work because I immediately went into, I knew what I was going to do. Special education came to the United States in 1966 and it was mandated federally. You had to establish, you had to create a class. Well, no one knew what they were doing, but I knew if you have, if you're given a bunch of kids and they're all different ages, that's just like my country school. And so because of that, I've, I've been 30 years teaching special education in the public school. And uh, uh, it was innovative because we had the teachers that taught us didn't know how to do this either because they hadn't been in a country school. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I was taking these classes and, and then I, was, uh, I thought, well, they, that won't work. You can't do that. <laughs> but anyway, that was the greatest, you know. So the, the same, the same idea of having different ages at the same time in the room, it was workable, you know. I don't really know how this was workable, because that even even the best of teachers, a lot of these, if we had quite a few kids, they had two teachers in the school, in, in the same building. In a country school. Country school, yeah. And one taught for the younger ones. And, mm -hmm. and, but, uh, excuse me, the idea of, um, of being able to, of the country school, the idea that I learned a lot from listening to everybody that's in the other room. And of course, we had a very dynamic teacher that she would tell stories about. I don't, we didn't have television there. We would have been from a movie, I suppose. And we would all just sit spellbound. And, you know, she get, if she got interested in telling this, she was a storyteller. She was. And this is Dorothy again? This, yeah, that's. She was. Uh, and I have. You know, some of the other teachers, I had a couple of teachers that were educated more than she was because she taught right out of high school. school and teach to teach the district right next district 16 so you taught at Taylor at the Taylor, Taylor school. school yeah how long did you teach there I taught, taught there uh, let's see I taught there one year then I went back to then I went back to school for a year at Peru and then I came back and taught them again the next year what was the first year that you taught uh, what year mm -hmm. It would have been in, in 49 and, uh, see, I graduated in 48, is that right? Yeah, 48, 48 and 49, mm -hmm. and then I went to college for a year, and then it would have been 50 and Back 50. to Taylor. Back to Taylor. And then where? And then I got married. Were, you, you, were you not allowed to teach once you married? Uh, no, I, but I was uh, uh, lived in Elk Creek, and I went and taught another country school near Elk Creek. Which school was that? Uh, it, well, it was Pawnee County half, and I don't know the number, and it was 42J of Johnson County, and it had both numbers. And I think it was called the Gatula School because there were a lot of good tools in that area. Was it south of Elk Creek? It was south of Elk Creek. Did you teach at any other country schools? Uh, no, I taught, then the next year I taught in Elk Creek in, in the uh, primary class. That would be 50, 51? Uh, yes. Okay. 
I was married in 51, so it would be 51 and into 52. Okay. And then then I uh, moved, moved to Fall City in about 50, 54, and uh, just raised children after that and went to school in my time. Mm -hmm. and, How many years total have you taught? Uh, fifth, well, I taught. This takes. I taught thirty years in public school, either Fall City or country school, and then I retired. And by this time, uh, I thought I can't. I can't quit because this is. I like doing this too well. So I went to uh, the, the Catholic school in Fall City, and I started a program for them uh, called Rescue Reading. And it was basically working not with math because I figured even at home they could teach them to add and subtract if they would, you know. But but reading is a whole parents by this time because this would be because uh, I just retired. I taught till I was 85, and then I thought I think I need to quit. By that time, physically I was having too many problems, and so. But I mm -hmm. took the, not this walker, but a walker to, to school. No, this is the one, this, because this is, I'm so short. I had to get a, I had to get a children's walker here. <laughs> but I have two walkers at home that have mm -hmm. wheels on them. Mm -hmm. But the kids took this at school and said, if they were, re if I'm really, really good, can I walk with your walker? Oh. So, that's, so I, um, I was really having a difficulty, but besides, I was 85 years old. Mm -hmm. So I really taught children for, uh, 53 years.